Hey guys, Phil Baumhart here. So for today's video, I'll be making another uh, Viking style bearded axe out of a uh, railroad spike. I've got a little bit different technique for you uh, in this video than the last one, if you happen to watch that video. Uh, on that one, I basically, you know, flattened the whole thing out and I think cut it off, you know, maybe around there, uh, wrapped it around and then uh, forge welded it over uh, somewhere in the, uh, the shank area before the, the blade, because this was the blade part of the uh, uh, axe. And so uh, I've done this on a couple of uh, axes already just to kind of test it out. So uh, I'm going to show you guys with this uh, particular spike. But basically, you know, you flatten the whole thing down. And then this end, I'm going to turn uh, down, basically like, an, uh, basically like an L. And then, uh, you know, this will be the, uh, the half of it. And then I'll wrap that whole thing around and I will forge weld this whole bit to this whole bit. Uh, and make this part of the blade. So that way you get a uh, thicker material in the, uh, in the blade itself of the axe and you use the entire uh, steel on the railroad spike. And then I also picked up a new tool since the, uh, the last video. This is a uh, tomahawk uh, mandrel that I got from the uh, Kane & Sons blacksmithing depot. So this has been uh, working out really good for me um, as far as making uh, basically making these uh, railroad spike axes into tomahawks. Uh, and so that way I just get the uh, tomahawk handles and I'm able to put them on the handle kind of quick and easy uh, and I'm not trying to find uh, the right lumber and uh, you know carve down handles because that's um, you know it's pretty tough intricate work to to get it right so it's a good thing to practice that but um, this is just something that uh, makes it a little bit easier and then I get a more uniform head so uh, I've been really liking the way this has been working out so um, I'm not exactly using it the way it's supposed to be used <laughs> I think you're supposed to uh, you know, you would maybe uh, with a uh, punch, you know, punch through uh, the steel, uh, drift through it, and then use this to expand the hole uh, and make a tomahawk that way. And I've seen guys do, uh, you know, tomahawk heads out of this where they have the blade and then the, uh, the spike. And, you know, one of these days I'll probably do that as well. But um, I'm kind of using this as a, uh, uh, I'm using this to shape the eye of the axe in a little bit different method. And so if you're doing your own uh, railroad spike axe project, what you want to look for is uh, um, where they have stamped on here HC, that stands for uh, high carbon. So it's not actually high carbon steel, but it is a higher carbon content uh, than other, uh, you know, standard railroad spikes that you might find. So um, uh, what I found with these is that you quench them uh, and I don't temper them because all I need is to be uh, hardened and it's pretty much good to go. I did some throwing uh, with one of my, uh, one of the ones that I made, and I hit basically every, you know, brick, stone, uh, cinder block, and scrap of metal that was back here, and the edge held up fine. The only thing uh, that put a little nick in it, you know, real small, nothing, that, you know, I took it out with, a, you know, uh, one lick on the grinder, not a, not a big deal, but uh, I had a stump that I had, uh, you know, gotten from somewhere, and somebody had pounded the whole thing full of nails, like just every inch of this surface was nails, and I accidentally just didn't think about it, stuck it in there. So, you know, it hit a couple nails in there and got a little bit of edge damage, but not a big deal. So for throwing, held, you know, holds up real good. If you don't heat treat these, they're uh, definitely too soft and the edge will bend just by uh, hitting wood. So uh, all you gotta do is quench these bad boys if you got the, uh, the high carbon steel. So let's get this hot and see what we can make. Okay, so basically just like that other uh, spike, we're just gonna go through, uh, flatten out this whole thing. So uh, I'll show you bits and pieces, but I won't bore you with watching me hammer out this uh, whole thing. There's a lot, of, a lot of metal to move around there, but I'll keep working at it. So I'm basically going through with the, uh, the cross beam of the hammer here. I'm thinning out the material in here that's going to uh, be the eye of the axe. Uh, I'm going to pretty much leave this alone because this could be the other half of the blade. I 
I've got that little step down in there because I'm going to bend it down that way and it'll make it easier to do so. Okay, so there we go. We're ready to uh, wrap this around. I'll do a little uh, test fit and sort of even everything up. And we'll get the borax on there and see if we can uh, forge weld it together. some of the scale doesn't look too bad but we want this uh, fairly clean and now we'll just uh, borax it down Well, you can see that that uh, got a little, a little too hot and melted off. Uh, but you know, you can see where I was going with that. Kind of a, a uh, Ragnar Lothbrook kind of axe with that, but this is still uh, going to be, you know, working out just fine. Um, putting a little bit more hammering right there in that area. I think I'll call it good in the uh, the blade area. I'll I'll probably just uh, you know fix everything up with some uh, judicious grinding. Um, we'll get that mandrel in there and get that eye uh, to a good shape. That's too sh that's too bad.
Okay, that's how we're shaping up. Uh, it's a lot thinner right in there. That's surprising. Uh, that was uh, that was never the intention there, so uh, I got to be real careful about that. Uh, but you can see just by dropping on the mandrel there, it all evened up pretty quickly. And you you don't want to be careful about getting it off here before it uh, gets too cold, because this will shrink up and uh, it's actually very difficult to get off if that if that happens. Other than this area right in here being a little too thin, if I'm not careful, that's going to just uh, melt right through. But you can see that the uh, the forge weld worked because otherwise this would just have split that all apart. So I'm happy about that. Not happy about uh, what's going on in there, but uh, I'll get a uh, a uh, tomahawk handle and we'll do a test fit up there and see uh, how we're looking. Okay, that's shrunk up quite a bit, not able to get that on there just yet. So we'll get another uh, go on here. And in the forge, I want to make sure I put uh, this end down because that's the hottest, uh, the hottest part. Okay, it's probably about as far up the handle that I want to go. Um, that way it gives me enough slack to get a good uh, fit. Probably shouldn't let it burn on there that long. but uh, So I'll just sort of do a little bit of light tinkering on here with the, the mandrel, but uh, I don't, if you try to get too far up there, uh, it'll never, never stick. At least I had that experience with the, uh, the first one of these I tried. I just, I made it too big and it would always just slide right off the handle. So you got to be careful about putting this on the right way, because there is a uh, there is a taper to this, uh, and I've screwed that up before. Uh, and that will, if you need to open this up faster, uh, put it on backwards, and that'll really open up this uh, front teardrop really quick. It's looking pretty straight. Need a little more tinkering. Okay, I think we're pretty good on the fit. Um, this is. <laughs> actually, what's funny is my other axes actually came out better than the ones I didn't film, but uh, I think we're going to call it a day on this. We'll call it a day on this, and uh, uh, I could uh, just quench it now and then grind it, but I got all this all this uh, kind of crap to deal with, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, uh, let it cool, um, then grind it, and then I'll quench it. You can see that on the edge there, no uh, uh, fault lines, no fault cracks, no uh, cold shuts, that's the word I'm looking for, there's no cold shuts on that edge there. Uh, you can look at the top of the uh, top of this thing here, uh, maybe a little bit towards the eye, but the rest um, looks good. So clearly, you know, just from, from using the, uh, the mandrel and all that, that this, uh, you know, is successfully forge welded. So it's weakest when it's that, you know, kind of soft orange, um, you know, from being hot. So once it's cold, and especially once it's quenched, I mean, you can throw this, you can use this as an axe, and it's going to be, you know, strong, plenty strong. You'll never be able to break it. I mean, the wood will break before this breaks. So it's not, uh, I'm sure it's not a perfect weld. Um, this is actually one of my better ones, I think, to be honest, <laughs> even after uh, uh, melting off the point there.
Okay, so there's what it uh, is what she's looking like. Pretty decent. So uh, let's um, get it hot and uh, get her quenched. I got some uh, coals left. A lot of that's died down, but uh, that's all right. Just add some more charcoal. Okay, so there's how the, uh, the head fit up is looking. I did my little uh, handle carvings in there. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. So, uh, so for the, uh, the stain on the handle, since this is already kind of uh, burnt from doing the, uh, the hot fit with the head, I'm going to try just uh, burning the rest of this uh, uh, material here. So scorching the wood like this is something I've seen, uh, you know, old hickory uh, forge do. Also, shout out to uh, Mech Red. He suggested that I try this on one of my axes, so here goes. Get the head off. And then I got my uh, linseed oil. Just throw a coat of linseed oil on there. That burnt coloration looks pretty good with the uh, with the oil on there. Kind of left it outside of the uh, the carvings there because it was actually uh, it didn't want to didn't want to burn in that anyways because of uh, you know it's kind of recessed from the rest of the wood so. I'm gonna leave it like that. We'll see how uh, we'll see how it takes to stain. There we go. When you uh, see it next, uh, we'll have the head sharpened and uh, the stain will be dry. Okay, so the uh, linseed oil dried on that uh, really fast. Uh, when it's charred like that, it really just soaks it up. So uh, I've actually done uh, quite a few more coats, and I will continue to do so. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just soaks it right up. Um, but I'm liking the way that it's looking and uh, it's got a nice feel to it. It's very uh, smooth in the hand, very comfortable to hold, so uh, I'm digging it. Uh, and I just thought I'd show you guys how I'm setting the heads here uh, to really make sure these uh, tomahawk heads are locked on. You know, you slip it on from the, uh, from the bottom. And I just sort of set it in the vise, not so tight that it's fighting into the wood, but just so that the head of it is resting on the jaws. And I'll take a light little hammer I can feel it uh, going down, and that way I just really lock in that head. So now you'll be able to use it as a tomahawk and throw it, use it as an axe, and uh, it'll be durable and really just hold up. So um, you, you saw that the head only went up to about, I think to about here, so it went uh, another inch or so after the uh, the hammering so that's really locked on there right now so my recommendation to you would be uh, you know have the head sit about here when you forge it up so that way you have room to really uh, get it on there um, on the first axe that I made I made the mistake of basically fitting it to about here initially and then when I put it on it was kind of maxing out the handle and I had to <laughs> basically make it into an axe uh, these are still uh, technically uh, tomahawk. So I can trim this down and uh, neaten that up. Probably burn it again, uh, put some more stain on there. But just thought I'd share with you guys this little uh, trick I uh, figured out. Okay, so here's a look at the finished axe after it's all uh, dried. So uh, really happy with the way this one came out. Um, even though it melted off, I'm Happy with that beard shape. It's got a really good feel to it uh, with that burnt finish and the uh, linseed oil on top of that. Uh, real smooth, comfortable in the hand. Like it, it, it kind of, it just has a good feeling about it. Kind of hard to describe. And I like the uh, the weight 
and the way that uh, it uh, handles, it really feels like a, a fighting axe. Uh, but you know, technically it is a tomahawk because the, the head will slide on there. Uh, I've got that seated on there pretty good, uh, but if you want to take it off, it is possible. Um, and you know, if, if the handle breaks, you can buy another handle from uh, you know any any generic tomahawk handle, and it'll fit on this head. That's kind of the cool thing about using that uh, drift from the uh, the blacksmithing depot. So here's a look at uh, what it would look like if the uh, if it didn't melt off. Uh, this is one where the, the beard came out really uh, long. So right in here, it's difficult to uh, to to get that because as you're hammering that out with the uh, you know you're you're trying to get it to the uh, forge temperature in the charcoal. You can't really see how hot it is, so um, on the first axe that I did, this one right here, this is the first one that I tried it with that kind of new uh, technique. You can see that's a shortened one as well. Still pretty uh, stout, so this one's got a lot more uh, mass to it. Uh, I made the head a little bit too big. You can see I maxed it out and had to basically make it into a, uh, an axe instead of a tomahawk. Uh, this one's got a little more heft to it, a little more uh, forward chop to it versus something like this but still a good learning experience this this handle is uh, actually uh, some of the heartwood hickory heartwood so uh, you just throw some linseed oil on that's got that really beautiful uh, coloration to it but anyways these are gonna be up for sale on the uh, Etsy web store if you want to get one of your own uh, I'm gonna keep making more of these because uh, you know everyone comes out just a little bit different they're fun to do uh, and it's good practice doing the forge welding so if you want to try one yourself uh, hopefully you found this video uh, helpful, and if you want to see more of my videos, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button. Um, I try to make a video at least once a month, maybe uh, uh, once every week. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.